well, maybe not habituate them, but we are certainly watching them. They seem very relaxed with things at the moment. And so those are the vultures that are involved and embroiled in the saga that is what's playing out on Little Gowry, I'm afraid. So they're just within touching distance, but we cannot see any of the cats. Now, I do know exactly what's happened. So we have Hosanna, Shungile, Tamba, Tandi, all in the same area. So Hosanna and Shungile were around. Tandi killed a kudu and then one of the Birmingham's came in and chased Tandi off and chased Tamba off and then one of the Kruler's cubs went up into a tree. I don't know if it's Shongile or Sana is up in the tree and the other one ran away. So all of them are safe and sound. The Birmingham is now eating the kudu and the vultures are just watching everything happening. But we have two species of vulture there and particularly the one on the left. And maybe, just maybe, a lot of you would not have got this on your bird list. But the one on the left is a different vulture to one we see very often. In fact, they're quite uncommon in this area. That is called a white-headed vulture. Now the white-headed vulture is one that is always there when there is fresh meat. You'll very seldom find them on sort of old carcasses and you can see why it's called a white-headed vulture because it's got that big bright white head and I'm going to show you a better picture now because the way that it's sitting is not very nice. Then the other vultures on the right hand side and at the bottom of the tree are all the normal white-backed vultures that we see in this area. Now let me just try and find it in my book. There we go. All right, so this is the white-headed. This is the one that I was talking about. And like I say, we don't actually that often see them. So here it is here. And you can see it's got that very, very, very bright white head. And then those white feathers on the tail area. And they're a big bulky vulture. You can see they've got a big bulky beak. And they're ones that come in and eat massive amounts of food um, and meat and big chunks of it yeah, up front. So they're normally one of the first ones to arrive. And if them and the lapid face vultures are around, they dominate the carcass completely. They're much bigger, they're much heavier birds, and they've got those big beaks that are able to really get into that carcass and open the carcass up for the rest of them. So they're not one that we see that often. And you generally only see these guys when there is a big carcass. So I would imagine that Tandi must have pulled down quite a large kudu for one of these to be around, which is quite cool. So nice to see not one that we see every day unfortunately they have sort of come in and out but they're not ones that are very common now the hooded vulture at the bottom here i would suspect is also somewhere around there i can see lots of vultures there that we just can't get on camera but i would imagine these guys are around and you can see the difference between their beak and so with the vultures here we have vultures that are useful for different sort of uses at the carcass so the white-headed is a big sort of meat eater and will open thick skin with a heavy set beak but these guys, you can see a much smaller, much smaller beak, and they will come in when everybody else is finished. So they're the last ones to feed. But with that beak, it's almost like a scalpel. They are able to glean off even the smallest little bits of meat and skin off of the carcass and make sure that they're able to actually get every last scrap. And they clean the bones to the point where the bones almost look white. So between the vultures, they've all got their own sort of separate use, and they all can get food even off a sort of carcass that looks completely deplete from our point of view. So they are around, and then the other one that we've got, oh, which way am I going now? There we go, is this white-backed vulture. So this is the most common vulture that we see in this area. They're all over the place, and are generally the ones that we find at the carcasses first before any of the others, just because of the numbers of them. Um, and they're quite easy to recognize. They've got that sort of dark eye, dark face, and then they've got this little white back over there that gives them their name.